morning I'm going to carry on and I call the message Character Establish Your Enemies. Character Establish Your Enemies. Now, people don't, people do stuff and then people get upset with it. It's because I do stuff that I believe is right. And other people don't like the way I do it and they get upset. Well, if I can reference back to the scripture, to the manual, and I don't use the letter because the letter killed, but I use the spirit in the letter. And the only thing I can do is to wash their feet. But the enemy, enemies, they will still be my enemy. Amen. So let's go to a scripture. When I've read it, the youngsters printed somewhere. Where is it, Rihanna? Rihanna? Where did you put it up? Zechariah 9, where is it? Hallelujah. Okay, it's a nice big one they print yesterday. Zechariah 9, 9, rejoice greatly, a, a, a daughter of Zion, shout in triumph, daughter of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, humble, and riding on a donkey. Uh, called and a, the foal of a donkey. Now listen. <clears throat> uh, Jesus, what well, this was prophesied um, years earlier that Jesus was triumphant, coming in on a donkey colt. So the only time when I am triumphant is when I have one. Now when I won, do I have an enemy? What happened to my enemy if I have won him? He's, he's neutralized. Now listen, there was a prophecy. There was a prophecy. There was a king coming. Triumphant. You don't get it. You don't get it. Okay, let me let me carry on. I, I, I'll give you a better explanation. If I if you heard the joke before, um, uh, uh, laugh, still laugh. Um, years ago, in two thousand and seven, to be precisely, we were living down in Auckland, and um, and they were they were uh, uh, the World Cup was in France. Now I had a guy um, I worked for for a company and I supply him with a lot of business but every time when he see me he says ah oh, the spring box lost and I don't even have a TV so I don't know who's winning or who's losing it and I would just share the kingdom with him and he would carry on like that and carry on like that and in the meantime I've resigned and, and I went another way and, um, and then um, I sent him this text, because the World Cup was on in, in France, and I said, my friend, England is meeting, say, South Africa in the one semi-final, and Ireland is meeting, who else, Japan, in the other semi-final. And New Zealand is meeting Australia at the airport. <laughs> you know what happened? He called me. But he, I said, who is this speaking? But I could see his number. He called me. I, I say his name is Peter. He said, oh, this is Simon. I just want to find out who are you. Because I established an enemy. I said, I said, why? I said, you're not, you're not um, Simon, you're Peter. He says, yes, yes, I'm Peter. He says, um, who are you? I said, I'm Louis. Louis, you remember? He says, Louis, I can't believe that a Christian like you can send me a text like that. 
You see, church, I have established an enemy. He was an enemy for years. And I thought, let me just play a little game on him. But you know what? He couldn't understand the concept that I could say something like that. We as Christians sometimes need to stand in the way of other people. We as Christians need to sometimes say what needed to be said. What needed to be said, thank you. Not to make a point, but to stand in the truth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There's natural enemies on earth. If I just think, uh, I think one of the biggest enemies of the kiwi bird is the, the hunting dogs. Uh, natural enemies. Um, one of the biggest enemies of relationship is tradition. I can carry on and on and on. One of the biggest enemies of the possum is the Kiwi drivers. <laughs> Don't believe me? Go on the road, you'll see they flat. It's not because they take a snooze there, it's because they were run over. We have enemies in this world. It's a natural thing. Let's go to Matthew and, uh, and read about what happened. Why was Jesus the friend of some and the enemy of some? Matthew 21, 6 to 10. The disciples went and did just so that he, Jesus, sent him to go and get the donkey. Uh, uh, just as Jesus directed him. Verse 7. They brought the donkey and the colt. Um, they, uh, listen, they laid their robes on them. So, all of a sudden, you see, my righteousness in the in biblical time, my um, displaying who I am is my robe. They lay their robes on the donkeys, and then Jesus sat on them. <clears throat> Verse 8. A very large crowd spread their robes on the road. Others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them uh, on the road. Verse 9. Then the crowds went who went ahead of him, and those who followed keep shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. Because there was a prophecy in the Old Testament that the Messiah will come from the bloodline of, of, of David. Hallelujah. So now all of a sudden, there was the crowd, the world, Seeing, as men have said this morning, mentioning about the, 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 the Romans that was dominated the people. So all of a sudden there was the people seeing the Savior came. The Savior. And they were shouting, Hosanna! That means, save us! Son of David, save us! That's what Hosanna means. Save us. Save us from what? Save us from uh, the suppression under the Romans. Save us from suppression under the system. Save us. Set us free. That was, and that was, they were actually asking it. Hosanna, Hosanna to the king. Save us. Save us. Okay. Listen, let me carry on. <clears throat> um, he who comes in the name of the Lord is the blessed one. So this is what they proclaim. This is what they, they are telling the people. Um, Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken. Now please don't see an earthquake now. No, no, no. Listen, let's read the Bible. Who is this? So it was shaken because all of a sudden 
They were upset. All of a sudden, their upper cart was upset. All of a sudden, things didn't work anymore. The way it used to work. Listen. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken, saying, Who is this? And the crowds keep saying, So this is the people. The crowds keep saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. You see, somebody knew there was a word prophesied, Zechariah 9 9. And they could experience, because they were under uh, uh, donation, they were under slavery of a system. If it wasn't under the law, then it was under the law of the Romans, but they were enslaved. And they see the freedom coming. They've experienced in the last three and a half years, we heard, the Messiah. <laughs> Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Jesus, that you didn't listen to your flesh when you went and prayed. Is there any way this cup can pass me by? But that you rise up and that you fulfill your call. Thank you. When you say it's my time to go to Jerusalem. And the disciple says, no, you can't go. They're going to kill you. And you say, my time has come. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you paid for us. So that we can have eternal life. Come, Holy Spirit. Help me this morning to display the wonderful miracle working power that Jesus made possible for us through his life. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Decisions made today is not always uh, 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 popular and there might be consequences, consequences for it for tomorrow. For sure there is consequences. But looking back in hindsight, it's a word that I learned when I came here. Looking in hindsight, I can see how God turned everything to my good. Not at the moment. At the moment, it looks like all hell break loose. But you see, I'm not supposed to live in the moment. We don't serve a God of the moment. We serve a God of yesterday, today, and forevermore. That's my Father. Who is the biggest enemy um, of you, Philip? Of you, Ellen? Who is your biggest enemy? Answer yourself. Who is your biggest enemy? And we, I think most of us want to say, well, Satan. Well, listen, we just heard that Jesus came in triumphant. So Jesus conquered Satan. So who's our biggest enemy? Let's go back to the manual and see what the manual says in Matthew 10, 35 to 37. This is going to surprise some of us because we think we must stay away from that. For I came to turn, the I there is Jesus, I came to turn a man against his father, a daughter against his mother, a daughter-in-law against his mother-in-law. Verse 36. Says, and a man's enemies will be the members of the castle. Jesus, what kind of ministry is this? We think it's all about peace. We think it's all about having a noise in my house and then I go out to the enemy and, and I shoot at them and I run back into the center of my house. Listen. Verse 37, the person who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. The person who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Now, I want to tell you something. Six months ago, my son and daughter, LP and Marianda, came and they said, we're going to sell our house and, and buy a yacht. I said, to do what? They said, God called us. 
and we want to do ministry around New Zealand and then to the islands. And I said, you can't, you never sailed in your life, you don't know about the yacht. He says, well, that's what God said. So I went to the Lord, and I have it my way. And I said, Lord, I've got four grandchildren. I don't see them on a yacht, because then I won't see them. And for six months they struggled to sell their house. For six months it didn't work out. And I didn't talk to them about the yacht. I done nothing. I was just having it my way. And one night the Lord said to me, what are you doing? I said, Lord, what do you mean? And I knew precisely. And, God, and I said, Lord, but they, they're my children. They're my grandchildren. They, and God said, they're first mine. Do you love them more than you love me? And I said, but what, 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 what? <laughs> And I said, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. Sorry, Lord. Let your will be done. The next day, they house sold for $110,000 more than what they want. Come on! Do you love mother or daughter or son or whoever more than what you love God? If that's the case, there's a problem. Let me carry on. In, in verse 37, it says, The person who loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. The person who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy. You see, church, sometimes we think, Lord, I am not worthy. No, you are. Jesus declared you worthy. But we should lay down our self-promotions. We should lay down our, our preconceived ideas of what we know is working. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Not, for, not without your knowledge and my knowledge and to, we come together and we sort out a thing and then we put a sticker on it. Church. Rubbish. Lay down your self-promotion, your life. Let's, let's go to, to Paul's writing in Ephesians 4, 22 to 24. Listen, you took off your former way of life. You have taken off your garment. You have laid your garment upon the donkey colt. You have taken off your authority. You have taken off your idea. You lay down your life. You have taken off your former way of life. The old self that is corrupted by deceitful desires. You are being renewed. In the spirit of your minds. You've been renewed church. Each one of us. I don't talk to us in general. I talk to each one of you this morning. God said you are being renewed. In the spirit of your mind. You are a new creation.
God said, I've seen that. And God said, I will honor you. The Reed family this morning for that. Hear the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me get back to the scripture. You put on a new self. The one created according to God's likeness. In righteousness and the purity of truth. You put on. Don't blame somebody else. Don't say, well, pastor, you need to put it on. Well, come, I'll sort you out with my angle grinder. That's the word we're giving this morning. Jesus came so that we can put on the righteousness of God in Christ. You should do it. Don't tell me, I struggle with this and, and I struggle. Well, it's okay. As long as you struggle less every day, as you conquer, as you lay down what you are not. Listen, don't try to become something else. Be who Jesus said you are. So it's not a thing, it's not a thing of trying, it's a thing of being. I preach to myself this way. <laughs> Listen, in according to the likeness, in righteousness and purity of faith, of truth. You know what? Walking in truth, I tell you what forms the flesh. Because, you know. If you, when you're a little boy and you pinch something and grandma come, I remember I used to, to, to grandma put in uh, canned fruit, a lot of it. So I'll, I'll get on the shelf and take the balls from behind and then go and eat it around the corner. And then the next one. And one day when Nana removed the front ones, there's nothing left. You know what? She will say, who has taken? Well, it's easy. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. But she knew. You see, to get out of a situation, to go out, when you drive and the cop sitting with his uh, camera and pulled you over, all of a sudden you went, hello, who are you? When you're hot, you idiot. Ever. No, 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 no. I want to challenge you this morning. Truth brings you to a place where God has called you to walk in His righteousness. You see, every time when you want to tell a little white lie, don't stand and speak the truth. Pay the penalty for it. And every time you pay, you lay down your life. You become a greater servant by the blood of Jesus Christ. And you can serve the world that's lost because the church is not where we're supposed to be. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. Yes. It's easy to blame the world. It's easy to say, wow, look at this and look at that one and look at that one. Where's the church? Sometimes we base our lives on tradition. And I do it this way because. Or I do it that way because. There's only one tradition. And that is Christ's tradition. And you know what? The word says. He's new every day. I don't, I don't live in yesterday. I don't do things today as what I've done it yesterday. No, I better. I better. Why? Because I want to hold a power lower. I want to serve more. Your nature establish your enemy. You see, when I open my mouth in 
tell him, people said, you sound South African. I said, yeah, I was from there. But I'm actually a Christian now. Now, one of two things happen. If the person is a Christian, I establish a friend. If he's not, I establish an enemy. But if I say, yeah, I am a South African, and I support the Springboks, enemy. You see, your character establish your enemies. Now, I hear people that want to go and fight the devil and want to do this to the devil and do that. And if Jesus came on a donkey called triumphant. He has conquered the power of the enemy. Now he said we should stand on his might, on his power. In his power, let me finish. We need to do something we heard earlier. We need to choose. As God said through the uh, prophecy earlier to the Reed family, there was a time when they had to choose God or my children's way. There's a time when I had to choose between the love of my son and my grandchildren want the love of God. Listen, 1 Corinthians 5, 7, clean out the old yeast so that you may be a new batch. You know what? Can you see yeast in the in a dough? Come on, when you mix it, can you see it? Can you see the reaction of it? Yes. So what is blowing you up? What is making you swell out like whatever? Is it the glory of God? Or is it your culture? Or your tradition? Or your way? Or you are um, a springbok support at day one? Let me carry on. You are indeed unleavened. For Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Now, unleavened means uh, in the Old and the New Testament, in the Old Testament, I think unleavened is, is uh, 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 talking about the yeast as uh, 20, 22 times, New Testament 17 times. And that refers to the sin in your life. So, on your life bold with some yeast and you getting bigger because of the yeast or are you unleavened? Jesus had no sin in him. The unleavened bread of life. Let me go back to the manual. 1 John 5. Listen, no, 1 John 3, 5. Uh, you know that he was revealed so that he might take away the sins and there is no Sin in him. The bread of life. He was the perfect example. Well, he was Jesus. Well, listen, church. Jesus walked this earth as a man. He showed us the way. Well, Jesus, you, you, you don't know about my church. You know, oh Lord, you don't know my mother in law. <laughs> Listen what the scripture says again. You see, we can go back to the manual. The devil did the same thing. He says to Jesus, it is written. And Jesus says, yes, but it's also written. You see, we can take the word, the letter out of context. But in context, listen what the Hebrew writer, Hebrews 4.15 says. Because we think there's no way that 
that I can be like Jesus. Listen. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who has been tested in every way as we are yet without sin. Now listen, church. The Hebrew writer doesn't say he um, has overcome everything and he was good and he was super and he was whatever and you are stupid. No, that's not what he's saying. He says, he understands your weakness. Is there anybody, put up your hand, anybody in here that never fall, that never get crossed, that never sin? Anybody? Come here, I can lay my hands on you for your life and spirit. Yeah, yeah, but he says, listen, he says, who has been, uh, but one who has been tested in every way as you are, but he never sinned. You know why, Paul? You know why, Roseanne? Because he paid the price for you. He never sinned. Because he knew that we were not going to make it. So he never sinned. But then they crucify him will here next Sunday about for my sin, for my weakness. That's why in Christ my sin is being declared not guilty. Not guilty. I finish. Husband and wife should become one. Adam and Eve, if not Adam and Steve, should become one. What's happening when we became one? We grind each other. We, you see, listen. Your greatest enemy will be in your house. Your greatest enemy will sometimes sleep with you. Or will sleep with you. Your spouse. And you will grind and you will fall. But by His grace you overcome. And you become one. In Christ. Your biggest enemy is in your household and is busy using you to shaping you into the image of Christ to lay down your life. Now, some of us are married for 40, 50 years and still grinding. I think you better come and see me for some counseling. Romans 6, verse 8 and 9. Now if we die with Christ, we believe that we will also live with Him. It's not a pie in the sky. I live with Christ. I live in His power. I'm not waiting for something to happen. If you want to know more about it, come and see me at my home. Verse 9, because we know that Christ, having been raised from the dead, will not die again. Death no longer rules over him. <coughs> Hallelujah. Have a death ruling over us? No. no. I'm a new creation. You come, you see her this afternoon. She has graduated. She didn't die. Death was conquered on the cross 2,000 years ago. A triumphant king came in and took out the sting of death. Well, as a Christian, <laughs> I tell you what I can take on who's the world champions, the All Blacks or the Springboks or the whoever. Man, I, I tell you, Hallelujah. We 
We heard the message today. And we heard that Jesus has done it for us. Go and study your notes, notes on the back of your newsletter. I want a worship team to come up. And in for us. And while they come up, listen to 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. For you know that you were redeemed from your empty way of life, inherited from your fathers. You were what? Redeemed from your empty way of life. Where did you get it from? From generations to generations to generations. The only thing that I want from my fathers is the blessing of Jesus Christ. Let me finish. Inherited from the fathers, not with perishable things, like silver or gold, but with precious, the precious blood of Jesus Christ, like that of a lamb, without any defeat, defect or blemish. Stop living like a loser. Stop living in your old nature. Stop standing on your experience of yesterday and you want to fall on back on that. I want to challenge us, church. Get out of your boat of security. Get out of your boat of boundaries. Get out of your boat of the knowledge of yesterday. Say, Father, here I am to worship you. Here I am to bow down. Not just a nice song. Here I am unconditionally. Lord, you have helped me to walk in the truth. As from today, we as a church make a decision to walk 